Hello, guys. Welcome to the Do- Two Dog Show. And I'm Dr. Ellie. And I'm Dr. Inky. And it's coming up to Halloween. Yeah, um, man. Technically, it'll be next week. We can still do next the Halloween week. podcast. I don't know why you do it prematurely. Uh, well, um, it's it's in Halloween season, really. So, All right. so, so, I, so I have this particular background of a of a witch and of a of a of a Grim Reaper. Uh, don't worry, next week will be something else, something yep. uh, a little bit more spooky. Yeah. So this week he tried to feature his wife and his girlfriend, ex girlfriend. Yes. Yeah. And so my wife and ex girlfriend. So it's uh it's uh on. On one side, uh, the witch is on a regular basis. So on the other side, Green Reaper is when, when she's having a PMS. Trust me, when I go I'm, to sleep tonight, she will be, she will be the Green Reaper. She'll be, she'll be, she'll pinch some life out of you, man. And I'm staying away. Geraldine, I've got nothing to do with this. It's all on his own. <laughs> All right, so oh, this week we, we, we're going to have something um, interesting. I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get um, uh, an Instagram celebrity next week to talk about mm-hmm. cyberbullying and his journey of weight loss and the ah, challenge cyberbullying. Let's, let's see if we can get it. But for this that'd week, this week we're going to be talking about what, Inky? Uh, how, giving as the best way to grow. Right, grow as in probably grow personally, grow your business, grow any way you want, or to 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 enhance your your self worth or or something. Because a lot of times we think that yes, I there, there, there was a podcast we we did that you know oh you you need to learn you need to sacrifice, mm-hmm. but another flip side to the coin is actually by giving stuff mm-hmm. for free. Mm-hmm. All right, you're giving away stuff for free. Um, you can actually grow. Yeah, okay. actually grow. You can actually grow spiritually, emotionally. You can grow financially. You you you, you just grow. Okay. So okay. one yeah yeah so so um a lot of people say um one of the best ways to learn is actually actually to teach, mm-hmm. and it yes. means that when you when you impart knowledge onto others, mm-hmm. right, whether it's for fee or 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 if you're doing for free. Mm-hmm. When you impart knowledge to others, when you give knowledge to someone else, you actually mm-hmm. get more in return. Mm. It means you get more knowledge in return because there will be questions from the audience, from your, from from people listening to you, that you have never probably thought ever in your life. Mm. Ah, that means that you've probably never come across it. And you, every time you teach a crowd, right, it can be a different crowd, it can be the same crowd. You always take away something different. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's there's always a different experience, and hence that is your growth. Uh, there's, there's there's a saying that says uh, there's a saying that goes, um, teaching is learning twice. Yeah, that's right. So what it means, you know, for all of you out there, is that when you teach someone, the person you're teaching is learning, but you as a person who is teaching you have to start to refresh yourself. You, you, you mm. have to remember what is it that you want to teach. You might do a little bit of reading just to appear that you've got the knowledge to, to impart or refresh your mm. knowledge. That refreshment is also learning. You are relearning what you've already yes. known. Yeah. Yes, that is right. So, so you're absolutely right, Inky. When, when we talk about giving, um, that's what it means. And I think there's some society or even some association that always um, use the term givers gain. The more yes. you give, the more you gain. Um, I think that's very important um, because in our current, uh, I think as, as we evolve, it's, I, I'm not sure whether to call it natural evolution or is it just a human habit that we are more into the taking culture? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah, I think, I think it's, it's, it's a natural form of, mm-hmm. a, of a human nature mm-hmm. to accept. You know, to take gifts. You know, someone so when someone's giving you stuff for free, mm-hmm. you you definitely accept whole wholeheartedly. Mm-hmm. And then at the same time, you expect people to keep giving. Right? Mm-hmm. You expect people to 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 give handouts. You expect the government to provide for you. You know, when times are bad, you expect your teachers to spoon feed you with knowledge or with information. Um, you know, sometimes you go out on uh, on uh, on dates. You know, you expect your date to pay. Mm-hmm. So a lot of times we expect the opposite parties you know, to, to, to give uh, mm-hmm. and, uh, and, uh, and in hopes that we don't have to do anything to actually, uh, to actually receive the gift. Mm. That, 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 that is correct. So we take for granted that you know, um, things are there for us to take. You know? mm. uh, we, we, we are in this culture whereby, let's say, once upon a time, 
um, I think our parents or maybe our grandparents' time, they have to give out a lot. They have to self-sacrifice. So say like their parents had, let's say, five to ten kids. They mm-hmm. could afford to probably just support one or two. And the first two would then have to work to provide back to the next generation. Yes. So that's the take a little bit, give a little bit, take a little bit, give a little bit. Yes. Then our generation is our parents have the capability of giving it to us. We take it for granted. Literally take it for granted. We don't give it for granted. We yes, take it for granted right. that it's going to be there for us. And mm-hmm. we, as the next generation parents, tend to give also a lot to our kids because we want the best for them. And if we do not inoculate or we do not encourage this uh, giving back culture, they will be always in this taking culture. And it then becomes, uh, I would say, universal habit. Everyone takes. Everyone are takers. Yes. And yes. taking is just a common norm. And and I like to tell, because I used to be in this network marketing whereby we, we, we say that, you know, we have to give um, people business. We have to give yes. referrals kind of thing. But most people, when they're there, we're all so busy trying to wait is anyone, is anyone going to give me give some business? Me. Yeah, exactly. Because I joined this to get referrals. Mm-hmm. I will give some, but I also want to know what I can get. Now, to put it simply, if let's say 10 people are in a small place and everyone is in the taking culture, what are you going to take from, from a pool of 10 people who are not giving out anything? Exactly. So if everyone's, everyone is expected to receive, then no one's going to give. And right. even if you give, even if you give, you expect more in return. Yes. But if everyone gives and you don't think about the receiving part, but everyone gives. So you just mm-hmm. pull, pull in, pull in, pull in. And, and it all depends. Do you need it? If you need it, you may take it. But if you don't need it, just let it be. Just keep pulling in, pulling in. You find that you have this wealth of whatever it is. And that can translate to either growth in terms of money, knowledge, networks, friends, anything. Yep. So what we're trying to tell our, our listeners and our viewers is that, you know, when, when it comes to life, it's weird. As much as we say that you should take what you think you are worth, but you also have mm. to give out without thinking what it's worth. Yes, definitely, definitely, definitely. And, so, um, yeah. Yeah. Do you do you have an example of 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 your own example about this? Um, yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, actually, uh, what happened was roughly about a week ago. Um, so my background is, uh, we have I I cover a lot of videos. Mm. So I I have an internal uh. I, I have our, our own marketing team. Mm-hmm. So we have, uh, we have videographers, we have, we have uh, f- uh, photographers, people coming on storyboards and all. So we generate a lot of videos on a daily basis. You know, at least about two to three videos per day we pump out to social media. And I think in all, all in all, over the past year, we've probably made about five to 600 videos. And we actually put it out, out there for free. It means we don't charge people for it. It's a mm. uh, short clips, 30 seconds to 60 seconds. Again, mm. we don't watermark our videos because mm. the main the main purpose of this was actually to give knowledge to educate uh, because yeah. I, yeah it's actually purely to educate because mm. we mm. because i i felt that the the malaysian scene you know um, lacks the knowledge for and in my in, in my field was for skincare mm-hmm. uh, we we believe too much in all these uh, big brands, you know, all their marketing uh, messages, you know, buy this brand, buy, buy that particular brand. However, a lot of people don't even know what they're actually putting on, onto the skin. So mm-hmm. we decided about a year ago that we would just educate. You know? we'll, br- you, we'll break it down to simple terms and we just educate. S- simple thing like, like what's a cream or what's a cleanser. So we put it out there. And uh, we, of course, we don't, we don't expect anything in return. Mm-hmm. Right? We don't expect anything in return. Mm-hmm. So we put out there, of course, what we noticed was tremendous growth because when people saw that there was free knowledge, they started sharing. Mm-hmm. And as well as when they shared, we became more and more popular. Mm-hmm. Right? So we had better businesses. We have better referrals from people. Uh, we, built, uh, we built trust with our patients even mm-hmm. before we've actually even consulted or even seen them because they've already seen maybe 10, 10 to 20 of my videos. They, they felt that like they could actually trust me already. Mm-hmm. Now, however, on the flip side, yes. one of the downside of giving away free stuff is people tend to abuse it. 
Mm-hmm. So we have caught on many occasions, all right? And a lot of times we just we just ignore it. Uh. We just close a blind eye. Mm. But we have noticed on many occasions people adultering our videos mm. to claim that I support their products. Wow. Right? Yeah. They will they will edit a little bit of clips, put in their products and claim that I support their products. And on top of that, some even have the nerve to put their watermark on my video. Okay. <laughs> see, my video has no watermark. They put their watermark on my video. They watermark your videos. <laughs> yes. So they watermark our videos. So then, of course, we, we went after them. All right. We warned them. They didn't. They, 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 they refused to listen. And of course, uh, we didn't want to do any legal action because it's going to be long and lengthy. So we, just, we brought some social justice. Uh, we, we got people to report their pages. And of course, they, their videos and their pages got, got taken down. Then, end of the day, someone actually asked me, you know, is it worth not watermarking your videos? Is mm. it worth giving away so much free information knowing that there are still a lot of people out there will still misuse and abuse your videos. Mm -hmm. And I still say, end of the day, it is still worth it because I've given so much videos, but I've gotten more in return. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I really gotten more in return. I mean, I've, uh, because of all this popularity, I've started, I've started different businesses and those businesses flourished. Mm -hmm. I've, um, I've been, um, uh, how, how would I say people have recognized me Mm-hmm. in public yes. right even yes. with my mask on you know <laughs> mask on right you can't see anything can only see my eyes people still um they still recognize me mm-hmm. and on top of that of course you know got invited on radios and yep. tvs TV. and yeah i yeah and i have i actually have a couple of uh, tv spots coming up in the next couple of months oh so fantastic. all yeah, yeah all of this is just from the act of giving yes and yeah and even till today, I will still tell people, you can use my videos, just don't, mm-hmm. just don't put in your products and your watermark. That's all in me. Otherwise, you can always use my videos. Mm. I, I totally resonate with what you're saying because I think uh, we are in this uh, culture whereby information is free. Uh, mm. People can access so many things. I'll be honest, even when I do some videos, I, I do borrow some, some clips left and right. But mm. there's such a thing called I think it's called fair use policy. Yes. So for people who are listening, fair use policy is, is when you want to use someone else's um, content, whether is it a video or is it a music or is it a clip from their, their movie, their whatever it is, you're using someone else's content into your content. Fair use policy uh, allows you to only use it for a couple of seconds. You cannot use a long clip, but it's a very short clip. You can use it to do a review. For example, you are reviewing, let's say, top five horrible movies that you do not like, personal opinion, you know? So you can actually put like five seconds of, let's say, if you didn't like movie A, you can actually screen that five seconds just so that people recognize and say, ah, I know that movie and that's it. But you're not allowed to play beyond a certain line because then it becomes a copyright issue. Yes. Yes. Because at the end of the day, whatever that you do, even if it's a review, you are boosting your personal commercial value. Yes, whether is it right. direct or indirect, whether is it based on that video you're making money or because of this video, it's making you more popular and because of your mm. popularity, you're going to get, let's say, sponsorship deals, etc. Yeah. So people can actually sue you. And I think those who went into betraying your trust, I think... Yeah. You've been very kind. Honestly, I think you've been very kind. Um, I, I understood you actually approached them quite nicely and, mm. and told them to not just take it down, but to make just a public apology, yeah. um, which they should at least, even if they didn't want to go, didn't go to that full page, um, let's say advertisement, they should have at least started with some form of apology. But I saw none mm. from that. There was absolutely no remorse. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly, exactly. Actually, actually, there was even a couple of them who actually cursed me back. <laughs> for, for, they cursed me back for, for asking me to ask them to apologize for using. So, mm. so again, I, I, for me, you can use my videos, right? Mm. I understand you can use my videos to then boost your popularity or your sales. But mm. do not use my videos with a direct means of um, profiting from it um, mm. commercially. 
right? It means that you can't put it in and put it say, oh, the, uh, uh, my products work because this doctor said so, right? That means that this is no longer fair use. It means that right. you are using my name to sell your product. This is no longer a fair use issue. It's plagiarism. They're actually yes, using right. you, saying everything, but at the end of it saying, ah, itu dia, Dr. Inky dah kata kan, kena guna yes, product. Betul. Produk aku, yeah. bukan produk, ah, do, bukan ah, Nihon, produk bukan aku, produk ah, lain, tapi produk ABC produk, lah. ABC. Ah, but, but the ABC lah. So yeah, I think yeah, that's yeah. that's unfair. That's that, that's total plagiarism. Now I'll yeah, give you yeah, an example. Yeah. Someone someone outright took, and I think that was with full intention because they know who you are, and yeah. they got it done, uh, despite your face being there. I'll, I'll give you an example. Something happened to me. So um, okay. some of my videos, well, some of my videos I outsourced it, um, to get it done. And there mm. was, at one time, a couple of my videos had a background. A background ah. of, of nice operating theater and everything. Mm. Apparently, it was, the, I mean, the, the, the media company unknowingly, they, they, they borrowed the image from another clinic and it just so happened to be another hair transplant clinic in Malaysia. Oh, yikes. I tell you, I was so freaking embarrassed by it. And and the doctor was, it was very nice. He texts me and says, hey, that looks like the background of my clinic. And I was like, OMG. I was... <laughs> Well, it's if it was an accident, right? Yeah, it was an accident, so it, so it's it, okay. In all fairness, I didn't do the video; someone else did it. Mm. I apologized to him. I took down the video immediately, and I actually issued a public apology. Seriously, mm. I, I, I just you know, put a tail between my legs. I mm. sort of like just I I I created, you know, I I, I took out some of the things, and I publicly acknowledged my competitor seriously it was mm. my competitor so i acknowledge him i apologize to him and i said that it was a, a genuine mistake and i do apologize for using that he was very nice to reply oh don't worry it's free advertising for me <laughs> <laughs> well yeah yeah well yeah you probably did him some some favors as well <laughs> yeah but 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 that's what i'm saying if someone if any one of you did use dr inky whether was it knowingly or unknowingly and he did approach you the first step you got to do is admit and try your best to you know apologize in whatever yeah. means that you can as soon as humanly yeah. possible don't wait and say ala besok baru i buat i take down first besok baru i i discuss with my legal team apa kita nak buat i think that is just foolish because yes, the whole night dr inky is already angry and then the two witches on his left and right we don't yes. know who they are but you know ah. <laughs> they will they will cast a hex on you man <laughs> inky is trying to sleep and this one says sue them inky is trying to sleep and this one says make them pay and he says no 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 sue them Make them pay. No, I'm very nice, Inky. Sue them. Make them pay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, but what I actually learned from this is this. All right. There are people, there are people, no matter how nice other people are, you know, like giving, 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 some people just take, right? Just take, like, as, as you mentioned, without remorse, they just receive, 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 and maybe... You know, maybe it's just them. You know, maybe the face is really, really thick. You know, maybe the skin is really thick, mm -hmm. and they don't feel any. Well, you know, I, I would say to 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 many people, after taking a lot, then you feel like you know what, I'm a little bit shy. I I don't think I should take any more. Mm. You know, um. So, but some people don't actually have that. So yeah, but uh, yeah, we are actually moving away from 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 topic already. Giving, all right? Giving, giving. Coming yeah. Back to giving. So yeah. So giving is actually one of the best way to grow. Now, another part of giving, which, um, which I've, to be honest, up to a couple of years ago, right, right, I rarely do. I rarely do because I wasn't brought up that way. I rarely do. But mm -hmm. only when I met my wife, married, mm -hmm. and then I realized that her family had a particular uh, culture of giving. Mm -hmm. So every year during Chinese New Year, they would visit a random orphanage and oh. they would donate. Okay. They, they would donate, right? Okay. And this has been instilled into them from their grandparents. Okay. Because their, their grandparents um, were, 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 well, I say, were well-to-do. But at the same time, they, they mentioned, just because we're well-to-do, we should always try our best to help other people. Mm -hmm. And then hence, their family is very charitable. And because it's not in my culture or it's not in my uh, family uh, upbringing, I got a shocked. Mm. 
Mm. I got a shock. All right, then I was like, why are you guys, you know, donating, you know, giving giving to charity so often? And I say, well, a lot of people do not have what we have. And hence, we just want to give them. You know, we have access anyway. We're just going to give them. And actually, that actually brought about a lot of other things. Mm. I mean, a lot of other good things mm. by going by by doing charity. Of course, when you, when you do charity, you then connect with the with the charitable organization. You know, yes. you talk to them. Yes. You talk to people who are less fortunate than you. Then you make you, of course, a few things. First of all, it makes you realize how lucky you are Correct. to have all of this. Have Correct. a roof over your head, Correct. to have food on the table, Correct. to be healthy, you know, to have family. Of course, that's, that's one. But secondly, even the art of charity mm-hmm. would actually connect you with other people mm-hmm. who are also charitable mm-hmm. and who also have abundance in their yes. life. Yes. And then you then build a relationship or a network with them. Mm-hmm. And hence, it then affects you on your personal life or on your business life. Mm-hmm. And then that helps you grow even more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's absolutely correct. Um, there's there, there, there's one of these uh, beliefs of karma where you know what you do comes back to you. So in a way, giving and receiving is 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 a harmony. The more you give, the more you receive. The more you don't give, the more you're stingy. The less likely you might be receiving it on the other end. Um, I would say. Over the last five years, this has been much more of my policy or my personal practice of actually trying to give out as much as I can. Um, mm. my, my dad is a very charitable guy. He, he, he is so charitable to the point whereby sometimes my mom can't stand him because you know, he's just giving you... <laughs> It's getting all, 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 all the old stuff, is it? <laughs> well, not, not, not really the old stuff, but, but he's charitable for his time and for money and even things like favors, um, things like, you know, when, when someone wants to borrow the car and he says, oh, okay, just take the car. It's okay. We can, we can make do with the other car. And, and you know, it, it puts us at a slight inconvenience, but it's not a disability. Yes. But that slight inconvenience that caused yourself became something that was of, I would say, an abundance to someone else who actually really needed it. Mm-hmm. And that was one of the things that I passively learned from him. And, and although I would say the way that I give is slightly different, but at the end of it, I realized the way to grow, the way to get more is to actually give out more. It's kind of like saying if you've got a house and you want to put, let's say, beautiful furniture in, how much of furniture can you put in before it gets cluttered and you can't even walk inside? You got to get rid of some. Mm-hmm. You can sell it or you can give it. Mm-hmm. But if you clear it out, then there's more room for better stuff to come in. That's, I, I would say that's the kind of a karma principle that I probably want to just share. If you don't make space in your heart or in your life, how is something else going to be able to come in? And if you're going to give away your junk, don't you think that, you know, in a way that the world's going to just repay you with other people's junk? Other people's junk, yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. But if you exactly. give away something of good quality, whether it was a product, your time, or money, whatever it was, your, your, your convenience, you give it away so that you had a slight inconvenience, one fine day, something else that's going to happen to you whereby you will receive that convenience out of yep. someone's inconvenience. You receive a slightly different thing. You receive the kind of knowledge that you put out that so you you share a certain um skill or trait mm, mm. and someone suddenly someone else would say you look like someone that i could trust to and trust this 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 new knowledge to because mm. you know i think that's how gurus are yeah gurus can can gurus generally retain because they want to make sure that when they give it out to someone is someone who can use it properly mm-hmm. it's like a burden of of trust. Um, so if if the person who who's going to be giving out has is not trustable, how can someone give you something that's heavy or something that's more valuable to you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. So 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 when it comes to that, um, you're right. Well, 
people need to realize that if you really want to grow, if you want to be better, if you want to have a more fulfilling, something that's uh, going to fill you up, you have to be prepared to give. And, yeah. and I always feel that when people talk about charity, all too often we always think of charity as giving out money. Yes. Hmm. And yes, yes. Actually, yeah. Actually, charity doesn't only means, mean giving out money. Hmm. Charity also means giving a time, yes. giving time to help. To to dash, to dash help some people. Actually, to be honest, a lot of a lot of places, right? They yes, as much as money is important for them to be able to survive, they actually don't really need all that much money because they already have you know constant funds coming in. But they need people to help them out. Example, example. If there is a mudslide, all right, mm. there there is a mudslide and an entire uh, Orang Asli uh, village uh, mm. it's uh, destroyed. Mm. And okay, you say, oh no, well, poor guys, I'm gonna, I'm going to donate money. Yeah, you guys donate money, but no one's going to help them rebuild. Hmm. Right? So, sometimes just by donating your time, yes. uh, you, can, you can go to the site, help them rebuild. They, hmm. they, you know, some other people have given them money. They have the resources to rebuild it, but no one is helping them rebuild it. So, hmm. then giving your time or, or putting in some, some effort actually helps. Right? right. It actually helps right. a lot. Yeah. Correct. And um, the other one, Apart from that, is um, uh, uh, giving the compassion of, let's say, knowledge or even just an ear. But again, yeah, you're mm-hmm. right. It, it it falls back to time. It takes time to listen to someone, but it also takes a bit of compassion to 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 listen yeah. to someone. So that's also giving out. Um, when we talk about you know having to give to grow, I would say one of the things that makes um sharing very beautiful is that let's say if someone says okay I don't have the money and I don't have the time or, or let's say the physical means to go out and do mm-hmm. something then mm-hmm. sometimes even listening you'll be surprised yeah. in today's world whereby people are so stressed out really stressed out they're stressed over everything and one of the things that they need to do is actually to voice out to just you know speak it out and have someone to even just acknowledge and listen and if yeah. you're able to just you know even give um uh, uh, one or two key point advice or basically most people just want to be listened uh, without mm-hmm. judgment. Mm-hmm. That itself is is a charity. That itself yeah. is is a form of giving. And what is it in for the person who's, who's giving out the time to listen is that you are getting life experience that you wouldn't have gone through. For example, if your good friend tells you, Inky, I need to tell you something. What is it? Oh, um, you know, like like life is shitty. Um, <laughs> um, me and my partner were getting a divorce. Now, mm. Inky, you you wouldn't have got known it. You you can't advise them, yeah. but you would have been able to hear from their perspective what went wrong. True. And although you've not reached that junction, but it preempts you to, let's say. Let's say if they, they were getting divorced because of, let's say, uh, external factors or it was just miscommunication or lack mm. of communication or lack of, of, of time management, you would have gained an insight, a knowledge that you wouldn't have personally gone through. But now you know, ah, these are importance to make a marriage work or these are importance yep. to make a business work. Yep, yep, yep. So, yep. Uh, guy, guys, girls, when when someone wants to talk to you and if you can listen hear them out you know hear them out listen and uh, don't be surprised if you listen with, with with an open mind open heart there are many things that you can learn that you can apply whether is it into your life or at least as a preventive measure and as people say prevention is always better than cure yep 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 that's true that's true so um giving as a way to grow now um not too long ago, I think roughly about uh, 10 years ago. All right. So I actually joined this, um, this network of people who teach people public speaking. Mm-hmm. All right. It's actually a, an organization called Toastmaster International. Nice. So it's actually, yeah, it's actually a group of people. They will sit together and mm-hmm. they, they, they actually teach one another how to do public speaking. Mm-hmm. And because the number one fear is public speaking. The number two mm-hmm. fear is death. All right, so the number one fear is public speaking, and these people take time off. Now, again, everyone is doing things um, out of their own um, kind heart. Mm. No, nobody is getting paid. I, same thing as well. When you join the the society to learn how to do public speaking, mm-hmm. the fees are relatively cheap. 
in mm. a year, you only pay maybe 200 ringgit. Whereas mm. if you pay wow. a public speaking um, expert or a guru or, or someone that really grooms you in public speaking per hour, per hour is a couple of hundred ringgit. Mm. This one is about 200 ringgit per year. Mm-hmm. Now, so what? So so the structure they have is the seniors, the one who have, have been through the system. They will mm-hmm. sit you. So when when it's your time to speak, they will they will give you criticism. You know, they will give you constructive criticism on what you've mm-hmm. done ro- right and what you've done wrong. Mm. Then, that is when you're young and you're inexperienced. Mm-hmm. Then, as you get more and more experience, they then place you in those leadership roles mm-hmm. to then groom others. Now. Mm-hmm. Then what happens is this. Now you're initially you have taken, 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 taken. And now you are supposed to give back. And this is, again, this is part of your time. It means that you don't get paid to, to appear in meetings once a week mm. for three hours. It takes time off your schedule, all, mm-hmm. of, all, all of our schedule. Mm-hmm. And again, we do, no, nobody gets paid. But all of us are there sitting in the meeting, helping one another grow. Mm. And in return... In return, example, if I'm the if 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 I'm the person who are critiquing other people, in return, I learn how to then um, uh, create a speech around things that I want to uh, encourage you to do. Mm-hmm. It trains me, right? It trains the person giving the criticism on how to give a proper criticism, a constructive criticism. At the same time, it puts me in a leadership role. So I learn leadership skills at the same time. And this is all by giving. Mm-hmm. So you grow. You grow not so in this in this particular society, you grow not only in your public speaking skills, but you also grow in your interpersonal communication skills mm-hmm. and leadership leadership skills. And all by just giving your time. Very true. Very true. Very true. And um Actually, I like to highlight for for people who are having that fear of public speaking. Oh, do yeah. do do really consider um looking into joining the Toastmasters? Yeah, yeah, it's it's good. Mm. Uh, I've never been to one, uh, though I've met mm. quite a handful of people who came from it. And one of the things that you know, first time I heard it, Toastmasters, I thought it was like you know a bunch of people who sit around and eat toast. Eat toast. <laughs> eat, eat toast. <laughs> That, that's what I thought as well, you know, toast muscles. Huh, what? You've been eating toast? And as you got older, toast. Okay, so you're going to, you know, cheers with someone oh, and, to- cheers, and, and toast yeah. them. Yeah, then later you realize, oh no, it's, it's literally a public speaking organization yeah. whereby yeah, they it is, coach it is. you to do yeah. pu- public speaking, be able to yeah. think right off the beat, uh, being able to yes. speak, making as little grammatical errors and expression errors as possible and speaking yes, in right. the best possible language with the correct intonation. Yes, that's right. That's right. That's right. I, I would say if it comes to any kind of personal development, anyone who's listening, whether you are in school, college, or if you're working, this will probably be one, one of the very important things that you might want to consider div- to devote a little bit of time. Um, consider it as you giving away your time mm-hmm. Yes. to grow yourself in a way yes. that that is very difficult to master because yeah. in school they don't teach you how to speak no they don't teach you how to speak they don't yeah. they don't yeah so did your public speaking improve because of that or you've always been a quite a chatterbox <laughs> So apparently, according to people, I didn't really, rec- um, uh, I didn't really need to go. Okay. So, but, but, even just by being there, just by being around people who are experienced in public speaking, you actually gain a v- very small insights mm-hmm. on how to make your speeches more effective. Mm-hmm. How to not bore people mm-hmm. in the long run? Because mm-hmm. you, there are there, there, again a lot of times when you see all these speakers speaking, you know, regular speakers, and especially in our in our in our line of work, medical conferences, you mm-hmm. know, it's dry data. You know, a lot of times where you tend to doze off or your mind wanders off. Yeah. So what they do is they teach you on how to capture attention. Mm-hmm. And if you do lose people's attention, mm-hmm. how do you actually gain it back? All so right. they actually teach you very, very good things. But of course, on top of that, the, the one thing that I actually like is the part whereby after you've had some experience, you, mm-hmm. then, you then motivate other people. 
Mm. You then motivate other people. And you don't only motivate them in public speaking, you motivate them in other forms as, as well, you know, in mm-hmm. their personal life, in mm-hmm. their careers. And actually, there's, there, there was the entire thing how Toastmasters started. Mm. Toastmasters started because there was a college professor mm-hmm. who realized that his college students could not get jobs mm. after they graduated mm. because they had very bad speaking skills. Mm. Very good CV, yep. horrible speaking skills. Then he Correct. decided, you know what? Once a week, I'll give you guys tutoring for free. Again, he gave it out mm. for free. Mm. And when his, uh, when, when, when his students start, started acquiring jobs and the word of mouth got out, mm-hmm. he said, you know what? This guy is teaching us to speak for free. Mm-hmm. And people came in and came in and came in. And that was like just some, something like about 100 years ago. Mm-hmm. Started from, 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 from a very small group of 20 people. And now mm. I think around the world, they have like half a million members. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah. So, but it all started with one simple just by, intention. Just one simple. Yep. The act of giving away. That's all. Yep, yep, yep. And imagine if any one of you had that kind of intention of doing something that simple, just that simple. Yeah. yeah. You could one day leave behind a legacy that... A huge legacy. A huge legacy that even you couldn't um, imagine. Imagine. The kind, right. of, the kind of the kind of implication that or the kind of change that you've caused mm. in this world, the, the kind of ripples yeah. that you've caused. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. So now, change doesn't only come just because you know, yeah. it's it's not like oh I want to change the world. I need to invent you know the next the next self driving car. You know mm-hmm. I, I need to invent the next rocket. Doesn't doesn't know you know it doesn't come from that. You know, most people can change other people's life just from a very simple act of giving. Yep. Yep. So. You're, you're absolutely right. A lot of us think that when we want to make a difference, we want to make something big. We want to create the next um, revolutionary uh, invention, the next handphone, the next self-sustaining ecosystem, the next battery that doesn't run out, or the next cryptocurrency, whatever it is. But these are, I would say, luxuries that not everyone can afford. Yeah. I mean, not many people will be able to afford a, a self-driving car. Let's be honest. <laughs> Let's be honest. Uh, e- even the latest iPhone 12 is ridiculously priced. Oh, it's doesn't... ridiculously expensive, man. It doesn't it... come with a charger, bro. <laughs> doesn't come with charger and no headphones. <laughs> this is literally like Mattel. Do you know Mattel? Yeah. When, 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 when they sell all the toys. Yes. You know? So b- batteries and accessories are all each sold yeah. separately. <laughs> That's what they always say. Yeah, so now your phone, everything is sold separately. One day they're going to say, you know, even the box comes differently. You know, we'll, we'll just give you that, that item with a plastic bag. That's it. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. So coming back. So coming back. Yes. So yeah. So so when we talk about um uh, uh giving, I I was just interviewing um this beatbox guy. So this mm. this this guy he does beatbox and it's fantastic the way that he could do his beatbox. And now what he's doing is that he's inspiring um the next generations of people mm. into beatboxing. And okay. Beatboxing, what I've realized is it used to be sort of like a, a freestyle art form. It's kind of like what probably our parents saw skateboarders as, you know, ah, uh, mm. fun, cannot make money, one la, do all nah, this exactly. thing, what you're doing with your life, that kind of thing. But when he performed, I was blown away. He beatboxed to the tune and vocals of like a 10 man band including the vocalists and I can only imagine that if I wanted to engage someone to let's say create that beat I would have had mm-hmm. to engage five to ten people to do it if it was on traditional yep. instruments and to be fair he's inspiring a whole new generation of people to be able to do what he does and even do it better translating mm-hmm. it so he's already you know in this giving out so he's yes. creating a new legacy the second thing is that let's say if we were to monetize even this he's able to actually transform beatbox into into commercialized music and i'm talking about corporate commercialized music these days when we do um when we do anything or we watch an ad we're not looking we're, we're not really listening to very traditional music we want something that's you know upbeat something that's mm. Punchy grabs your attention, gets yep. you in the mood, gets you yep. excited. Your adrenaline is pumping. You're actually paying attention. So you you could use electronic music, but imagine if it was actually from the beatbox, from 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 a human vocals, and he can do it at a fraction of a price. And knowing the intention of what you want, you want it 
sad, you want it happy, you want it fast, you want it with a little bit of Mandarin, Malay, come English, a bit of Tamil. It all infuses in and you can't do it with a traditional kind of thing. So what I'm saying is when, when, when someone is able to give out, create a new generation, and, and I would say this guy's amazing. He's creating a new generation of, of, of art. That is growth. You are actually mm. growing the world by yeah. just being there, giving it out. Yeah. As what, as what Inky, you're doing. You are mm. trying to transform the way people do their skincare. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll be very honest with you. Even in my line, people are asking me questions about like how to wash hair. Yeah. What to use? No, it's, it's simple stuff. It's simple stuff. It's the simple stuff that uh, yeah. people that 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 we tend to um, take for granted. We, yeah, yeah, we take it for granted. We, we thought that people know people know how to wash their face. Yeah, or people know how to wash their hair. Actually, they don't. They don't. And they don't. And, and I'm, I'm in 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 my honest opinion, I'm not I'm not putting anyone down. I'm just saying, okay, that's a gap that yes. somewhere along the line, um, somehow. The, the, the world education failed to communicate to this current generation on how to do a hair wash or how to how to look after your face or yes. or what are the basic foods you know yeah, our yeah, time yeah, yeah. our time our parents were not so educated or our grandparents weren't so educated so they'll say don't eat this it's heaty don't eat this mm. uh, it will cause uh, too much of angin <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, happens, yeah, happens. Yeah, this no. is too heaty. As, as you mentioned, too heaty, uh, cause you angin, or too cold, the food is cold, or you you or you or you're gonna mix cold food with hot food and whatever. Yes. All this, all so stuff. Well 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 it's not scientific enough, but it was giving out the information that you eventually became a habit. But this today's generation, or more like or or, or between our parents and us, that generation is not doing any form of education because we assume that you know, these kids are, are, are smart enough. But in actual fact, these are the basics that nobody wants to talk about. And, yeah. and what you do of giving out is very important. And, and I implore that you don't stop doing it. You have to just keep on giving out to these people. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I have to, man. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I, I, was, uh, I was talking to a dentist the, the other time. Again, um, huge following on social media. And he told me, it's, it's, it's a simple stuff. We teach people simple stuff. Of course, um, he said that we we make money off uh, procedures, you know, or braces, teeth whitening, and all. But that's not that's not what what we really want to 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 put on our, our social media page. And if you go to your social media page, it's simple stuff. Mm-hmm. How do you brush your teeth? What toothpaste to use? How do, why is it important to floss? And again, in, in Asia, I think we don't really have a very good culture of flossing because this is more of a Western stuff. Mm. Our parents never rarely floss. I think, I think if not mistaken, my parents never flossed. Mm. So again, the, you know, the, the importance of flossing. So again, these are the simple stuff. And, and just giving away simple tips, mm-hmm. simple tips, mm-hmm. right? And that's enough you know, to, to sustain his business, to, to, to actually grow his business. And of course, the more he gave, the, the, the better he was. Correct. The better he was. Um, so, guys, girls, businessmen, um, what we're trying to tell you is that do not be stingy. Yes. Um, do not be stingy because what, what you think is your so-called trademark, no, don't worry about it yeah. because it's all about service. It's all mm, about service. Yes. And, yes, and, exactly. when, when, and when you give out, you get back. The more you give, you grow back in your business. The more you give, the more you grow back in reputation. The more you grow, you give out, the more you build, you grow back in trust. And these, yeah, are, yeah, yeah. And these are intangible um, assets. Mm. You, you, you can't buy trust. Yes, that's you right. You gain that's trust. Right. The only way to gain that's trust right. is to give trust. Yes, that's right. That's right. And a lot of times we feel that, you know what, I, I want to leave a legacy. I want to leave a legacy how I want to, as, 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 as you mentioned, I want to invent the next big thing. I want to, I want to grow this huge business and then you know, leave a huge legacy. But actually, to be honest, most of the time, by living a legacy, most of the time, you just need to teach. You mm-hmm. just need to teach mm-hmm. the next generation, inspire the next generation, and then they then keep your memory around and inspire the following generation. Mm-hmm. Now, a lot of a lot of us thought, think that Albert Einstein is super brilliant scientist. You know, he did all this. He he won a Nobel Prize. Actually, the re- the main reason why no why Albert Einstein is famous and actually has been lost to 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 history already. Mm. The the real reason why he is famous is because he is willing to teach 
in mm-hmm. any university, any university around the world mm. for free. Mm. As long as you pay for his flight tickets and his accommodation, mm-hmm. and it's within his uh, schedule, he mm. will fly there and teach for free. So what happened was there was a college in America uh, and this was back in the 40s, I think, 40s or 50s, uh, r- roughly about the 40s. Um, back then, there was segregation. The blacks and the whites can't sit together. So the blacks have their own colleges. Mm. So he was invited to speak, to teach physics in a black college. Mm. Now, most scientists or most professors his era would mm-hmm. refuse to go. Yep. But he went, mm-hmm. he sat down mm-hmm. and, he, and he taught this, uh, this, this, this group of, uh, of uh, college kids, of mm-hmm. these uh, black college kids for mm-hmm. I think for his particular semester. Mm-hmm. And from there, this group of college kids then spawned the mm-hmm. next generation of leaders. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's actually the simple things like this mm-hmm. that actually built his legacy along the way. Yep, yep, yep. And um, I would say just about anyone who wants to leave a legacy, if you actually analyze that something that they left behind, mm-hmm. that they've given out. Um, but if I think everyone should be able to, to sort of like when they analyze, be very objective and say, mm-hmm. what was mm-hmm. it that they really, really gave out? Let's say Muhammad yes. Ali. What did he give? Maybe he did do charity, but no one really knows about it. Mm, maybe he did. Yeah. yeah. Maybe he did. Um, a lot of it, you know, he he did his fights and he won, so he 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 was famous for that. But the yeah. real the, the real legacy that he left behind was that he gave hope. He oh gave, yeah, he did. He gave hope. He gave hope of peace. He gave hope mm. of, of against discrimination. He yeah. gave hope that the black person or or the Muslim could be able to thrive in a world of oppression. Yep. That was his hope. Say, say, same as Malcolm X, you know, um, what, uh, he, he didn't give money. He, he didn't mm. have enough time to, to go into yep. universities to give education. Mm-hmm. But again, he gave hope. He gave purpose. Mm-hmm. Um, and that is, that is another way of giving out whereby after that, you may not have gained something, but the world has gained something. And that's how yeah. you grow. But until today, yeah. when people talk about Muhammad Ali, people know who you are. Yeah, uh, yeah. If someone says Laila Ali, they're like, huh? Who? Oh, Muhammad Ali. <laughs> exactly. And then you say, I'm, I'm Muhammad Ali's daughter. Ha. Ah. And there's so <laughs> many Muhammad Ali's in the world. Yes. There's yes. so many yes. in the world. Yes. Muhammad Ali is actually two of the most common names. Yes. Muhammad and Ali. They're, both, they're two of the most common names. But combine yet, that, it's synonymous with it. one. Yes, one and you, person. And, and, yes, and, it's not and like his face pops in mind. It's yep. not like Bill Clinton. The name is so unique, Muhammad <laughs> Ali. Yes, even Muhammad Salah is unique, but Muhammad yeah. Ali is so common. Yes. Yes. Yet it's synonymous with only one. So if you want to yeah. name your child Muhammad Ali, he's going to be overshadowed. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> ah man ah. actually that should be one of our topics you know living in the shadow of uh, of a famous parent <laughs> living in the shadow of a famous parent you know, it's that, not easy it's uh i it's it's actually difficult <laughs> it's it, it's difficult it's difficult i mean um if you if you think about it even like like like, like kids like footballers or, or basketball yeah. players nobody yeah, yeah. nobody gives a crap about michael jordan's kids. do you know yeah exactly that, that, that's the, that's the same thing do you know michael jordan's kids yeah. never went to the nba they mm. tried they tried they tried that's they tried cool. Right. Everybody was willing to give him a chance because mm. he was Michael Jordan's kid. Yes. He just, they, he, they just never had the potential. Just can't. It's the same as football. Yeah, just can't. So there was yes. uh, Johan Cryoff and, yes. and, Jordi, and Jordi Kraft. Jordi, uh, Jordi, yes, Jordi Kraft. And, 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 and until today, people know who Johan Cryoff is. Johan Kraft, yes. And, and Jordi is like, huh? Who? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or the one who didn't really make it. All right, we got it. We got it. Not many can actually live up to the legacy of their parents. And sometimes yeah. I feel, uh, when, uh, when it comes to that, even for my kids, when I, they, they, they ask me, do you want your kids to be doctor? I'm like, no, hell no. Yeah, you want them to carve a name for, for themselves. Right, whatever right. it is. Yeah. Whatever, it, whatever is. it is. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's kind of like, that's why you're not an engineer. 
Yeah, the, uh, actually, the reason why I wasn't an engineer because because my dad suffered, right? Yeah. When he was an engineer, it was it was a tough life for him. Then he realized that you know what, as glamorous as an engineer is, actually the life is shitty. Mm. <laughs> so he said, better don't take engineering. Yeah, uh, of, uh, yeah. So uh, yeah, so yeah, but um, um, yeah, giving as a way to grow, even even in forms of parenthood. Right? Mm-hmm. No, I'm just going to go something something different. Even mm. in the forms of parenthood. Mm-hmm. Um, you are actually giving a lot to your, to, to your kid. You're sacrificing for them. You know, they never ask for anything. You are just giving knowledge. You're giving shelter. You're giving money. You're giving food. You're giving everything. Mm. However, from there, you also learn. Mm. You also learn. You learn compassion if you yes. lack. Mm-hmm. You learn patience if you, do, if, 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 if you lack patience back then. Correct. Right? You learn how to how to want to inspire your kids to be better people, even mm-hmm. maybe better than you. Mm-hmm. And even parenthood itself, itself it's, it's, it's a form of growing. It's yes. a form of growing. Mm. It's, it's you going into the next phase in life. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I think that's important because some, some, some parents, well, I think with the best of intention, they would let, let's say, someone who they thought was more capable to raise the child. Mm. Or yep. let's say to throw off to boarding school as early as you know, um, at ten or twelve years yeah. old. But you miss that. You will miss that parenting thing, uh, whereby you have the the your opportunity to inspire them or to actually grow yourself to to either make mm. yourself better or to make yourself better by humbling yourself back down to earth. Yeah. So yep. so growth can be you know from here growing there, but it can also be from here humbling you back down. That's also growth, even though it looks like you're coming back down to earth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, that's true. That's true. But, yeah, but it makes you a better person. And I think that's mm. what, that's one of the, the, the beauty, beautiful things about parenthood is that it can grow you, but it can also humble you a lot. Yes, that is right. A lot. That is a right. Lot, that's right. All right. So, again, uh, we are, we are we're crazy. We're giving out so much of, of, of talk. <laughs> we're, well, we're, we're well growing, we'll probably we're get gro- something in return. We're, we're growing the sessions. If anything, we're just growing the session time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's getting longer and longer, damn. <laughs> it's fun. It's fun. It's fun. Always yeah, a pleasure. It's fun, it's fun. Um, as, as mentioned, um, I will try my very best I, to, to, to get hold of um, a guest uh, on our next session. And this would be talking about uh, cyberbullying and mm-hmm. uh, a bit of uh, well it's a bit of a weight loss journey but I would like to think more of it as a personal discovery and determination journey because I think in terms of any kind of improvement weight loss is probably one of the most challenging uh, journeys if you yeah, talk about is, is. if you talk about knowledge is yeah, you go on the mm-hmm. semester yes you need to pay attention but eventually you get there but mm. uh, Weight loss is no joke. It's not. Yeah, easy. weight loss is no joke. The older you are, no joke. the bigger you more are, the older you are, the more difficult it gets. And yeah, it to, to do that is a lot of discipline and, and, and self determination. So we're going to combine um, those couple of stuff. We may have to do it in Barca, half half. Ah, it's okay. No problem, bro. Oh, uh, we'll do what he does best. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and Masalah. Yeah, I think that will be the, the you know, today is episode 20. Oh, really? We have done 20 already? Oh, 20. Oh, damn. We've done, we've done 20. Not bad, huh? We've done 20 not, already. Wow, not, we should not. pop the champagne. <laughs> <laughs> well, unknowing, unknowingly, we, we did 20 already, you know? Yes, without without actually counting, we've done 20. Yeah, we, I, the only reason why I count because, you know, I have to fill in the episode numbers. So now I'm like, ah, I, 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 was, <laughs> I was filling it up yesterday. 18, 19, eh? 19 already. 20. Today, today is 20. Wow. Ah. So, let's do 21 in Barca. Let's do Out, cat, no problem. We can do 21 in full Barca. No All problem. Right. Okay, so guys, <laughs> we are signing off. This is Dr. Ali. And I'm Dr. Inky. We are Until next time. Dogs. Until next time. Good night. All right. See you guys.